Welcome to Business Wits Better Business Results. My name is John Witt and I'm your host. Today our guest is Lisa Reed and Lisa is an engaging speaker and mindset facilitator. Lisa, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So help me understand what mindset facilitator. Mindset facilitator. Well, I work with a company called Productive Learning and our zone of genius is helping people understand their mindset, meaning like maybe those those thoughts that we have in between our ears that we're not sure why we're doing something or why we're not doing something that we know we're supposed to do. And so we facilitate that development for people. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, yeah I, I get it. Because I mean, I'm always, well, not always, but sometimes I, I want to make a change. I can't figure out how to do it yeah. or why or something's stopping me. And you're going to help me get through that. Yeah. So we, we, we can help them see what they don't see about themselves. We ask really good questions to help uh, bring out uh, those blocks. And, and that's what we do. So why, how did you get into this job? Why and how? Well, I am, gosh, I'm, I'm a product of productive learning. I actually started there as a client um, several years ago, many, many years ago. And I was going through some, you know, personal challenges. And, you know, here I was this person who I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in speech communication. I have been taught communication when I was 22 years old at Cal State Fullerton. So okay. lots of... Yeah. Lots of knowledge and certainly interest in that in that field. Um, but yet I was still um, up against some challenges. I was getting divorced and we had um, you know, real estate challenges and things like that. And I, I looked around and I thought the results that I have were not ideal. This was not how I this wasn't your vision. imagined okay. it was going to turn yeah. out. Um, so I thought, well, let me get curious and let me see what uh, what signs maybe did I miss or something. And I got a call from, a, um, I had befriended one of the trainers at Productive Learning. And he invited me to a workshop, which I now facilitate. And um, it really shifted my life in, in, a, in a big way. And then eventually ended up, um, our, cross, our paths crossed and I was able to uh, start working there. And now I'm, I'm a speaker for them. And... I go out and teach people about mindset all the time. And so did you realize through your own experience that this is a place of passion for you? Absolutely, because I got so much results, like, instantly. Uh, this impacts for other people in this Yeah, area. yeah, it was instant results and long-term results as well. Um, I went in for love and money, and those pieces worked out really well for me. <laughs> okay, so yeah, thought, and probably okay. some more. We'll talk some more about that yeah, as we go along. Yeah, yeah. So, so productive learning centers and, and in your particular space, right, who most benefits from your services? Um, well, I would say um, definitely people in, there's there's really three categories. Like the, you know, there's uh, financial, category number one. Category number two would be like their sense of purpose. And category number three would be relationships. So for example, um, financial, category number one, you know, people come because like, oh, you know, I want to make more money in my business or I need to make, or, more, money, need to make or, more money yeah. or I'm just like, I'm struggling with this or I have anxiety about it. Um, so we can help them through that. And we even have workshops Work on money and relationships okay. and things like that, our relationship with money, prosperity, things like that. And then um, the second category of purpose, uh, a lot of times I'll hear from someone and I, and I could relate to this. Yeah. One. Cause you found your yeah. purpose in many ways. Yeah. Right? yeah. Where it's like, um, I'm doing what I, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, but there's still this kind of like, it's not quite, I'm not quite there. Like I feel like something's missing a little bit, not a hundred percent fulfilled. And that's so when, maybe a little hole. Yeah. Like yeah. we say like, okay, all the boxes are checked. Why don't I feel great? Like what's going on with me? That's that this, sh I should be happy. Like what, what's, what's wrong with this picture? So that's kind of that exploration of like sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. And we have workshops on like mission, core values, vision, like to help people understand like what is, get more clarity Where on that part. Yeah. yeah. What's, uh -huh. what's in your soul? What's in your, you know, the deep, deep part of your soul. And, um, the third one, uh, relationships. Um, is that, is that like the trickiest one or that, you know, it's, it's the most exciting one, I think. Okay. Because a lot of times we're, it comes out in a relationship we have with someone else or lack of relationship with someone else. Maybe they're, you're single, but you don't want to be single. But you've been single for a really long, like 10 years. Okay, so there is a part of you that wants to be single. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or That's why you are. Yeah. Or you're in a relationship and, and it's not 100% ideal. So, you know, a lot of times we, we really would love it if the other person would change. That would just make our life so much easier, you know? 
Yeah, if you they could would just be different, be different. Could you just be different and then I'll be happy? Um, but the relationship with ourself is another relationship that we don't necessarily explore of like, what, what is it about me that's attracting this uh, dynamic or lack of connection? When I say I want connection, why am I not connected? So the relationship pieces, is it with our kids, ourself, our partner, family members, our coworkers, our employees? And it's kind of hidden, right? I mean, we, it's it in is. there, it's in there, but it's like in there. It is because we, like we were talking earlier, we, it's really, everyone's different. And each person, we kind of have this, like, I wish everyone would just do it my way. But yet, here we are with all these different people. <laughs> so how, Wait, how do we get everyone to do it our way? We, we don't. <laughs> so well, you, can't, you can't make anybody else. You can change. You have 100% yes. control over yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the part of, like, okay, how do I understand myself enough to um, take the situation that I have and start to shift my own experience of that situation? That's very powerful. So is there a component of sort of willingness to learn, willingness to engage that's important? Yes. So people that are more willing to, they're going to benefit a little bit more? I mean, yes. Certainly in those three areas? Right, right, yes. Um, curiosity is huge. And um, it's not its not a court-mandated workshop. <laughs> right, <laughs> so yeah. You don't, Just volunteer. It's not a court order. Yes, it's volunteer. For this stuff. Yes, yes, so please come. <laughs> yes, so the people who can benefit most are definitely people who... Um, usually are in their top top of their field. They are they are um, wanting to tap their potential. How can I maximize my potential the most? They're usually people who are really enthusiastic about growth and change and moving forward. It's like yes, I'm a, I'm appreciative of what I have, and I still am going for more. So there's the people that say I know there's more. I know there's and more. And there's people that say I wonder if there's more. Yes. Both of them would probably be very Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great way to but say it. But if you don't have one of those, yeah, yeah it may not fit. No. Okay. Or um, like a not a not fit would probably be someone, sometimes people say, oh, I know someone who really needs your work. You're like, well. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not, yeah. They, you have <laughs> to want sure. this yeah, they, to make it work. Yeah, you have to want it yourself. Yeah. You have to want it yourself. So explain the process. How does, how does it work? And I know you, you talked a little bit about experiential learning, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So. The way that we, we engage growth and change and facilitate mindset um, growth is through what we call workshops and experiential workshops, meaning it's not just a workshop where we're teaching and everyone's taking notes. Actually, that's, that's quite opposite of what we do. Okay. It's a, it's a, we ask really, really good questions to our clients, and we help them. We 100% we believe they have the answers within them but maybe they're just hidden. Uh -huh. So it's like, how well, can I ask? Hidden, a, yeah, <laughs> if they, know the <laughs> if, they, they had, if they wasn't hidden, they would have already solved They'd that problem. They're coming they to us to here. solve yeah. a problem, exactly. So it's like, how do we pull those answers out? How do we take what's in the subconscious, the beliefs that we have, and bring them to the conscious level, especially when they're not serving us, when those beliefs may not be serving us? And I, I often say it's a discernment. Like, how do you discern? When do I want to? Hold on to that belief and keep that belief, or when do I want to uh, shift it? Sometimes it's just recognize that you have that yeah. belief, and then you can make a decision. But if right. you don't even recognize it, it's a habit. That and you we're not going to, yeah, and we're not going to blow out, uh, what is it, throw out the baby with the bathwater either. Like, you know. Um, it might be okay in some cases. Absolutely. Right. Like, well, I want to help others. That's a great belief to have. But if you're helping others to your own detriment, now we That's need our problem. discernment. Yeah, we need to, okay, when, when are you saying yes so much so that you're now you're having some significant negative effects from that and that's and right. I don't want that right. so so interactive and collaborative because that's the way I look at yes. it at a workshop but you um you mentioned something about some specific activities like a game or... yes yeah so sorry yeah the experiential part of it um what we do that's a little different than maybe a therapy type of situ situation is we actually create an experience to pull those thoughts pull those beliefs and behaviors up right then and there in the workshop. Consider it like a laboratory setting. So, for example, if we have a workshop on money and people are coming and like, I don't understand my money stuff. Like, why do I keep, I make money, then I lose money, and I, or, I, or I can't seem to keep it or whatever it is. Um, or I can't seem to make it. We might play Monopoly, for example. Like, oh, okay. well, I'm a huge Monopoly fan. Yeah, see, you either love it or hate it. We're, you know, I'm, I'm a I, big Monopoly. I, I'm a big your, board game guy. I get it. Know? You're yeah. super competitive, right? Yeah. You love that com competition. It's fun. I don't play to lose. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I bet that's totally true. <laughs> We're probably never going to play Monopoly together. But <laughs> it might be a good thing. Okay, go on. Go on. 
anyway, but yeah, so you learn about what, um, what comes up for you. Like, uh, if you hate it, why do you hate it? If you love it, why do you love it? What, what does this bring up? Owing money, paying money, charging people money, like all that stuff's getting paid, getting, you know, uh, should I make a decision? Should I buy property? Should I not buy property? Like all this stuff starts to come up when we're playing and we kind of do what we do. So it's like, okay, so now we stop the game and then we reflect on what just happened. Okay. It's, and then it's how's so that connected? interesting because everybody's so different. So, so I... I'm super competitive in many, many ways, uh -huh. but my primary motivator is is what we call theoretical. I I am in the search for truth, the best way, the best. Mm. What is the best process? Was the best strategy? And you can take all these little different tools and tell about how we put them all together in the right place. So with Monopoly, interestingly enough, you know it's a dice game, right? You don't get to decide all right. of the things. The question is, how well do you use all of those things? And mm -hmm. I love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so while it does have some era of chance because the sure. dice roll the way they do. Um, there's, you know, people that can make things happen, even though they end up with, you know, all the crappy stuff. Yeah. The, <laughs> I'll take out no ways. Yeah. Take well, but yeah, yeah those, are the, those are the ones at the bottom. So, um, well, that, that sounds fabulous. So tell me a great story, a great success story. A great success story. Um, one of our clients, uh, had great success in her financial goals. She crushed her financial goals, actually at the end of last year and sent us an email saying like, I crushed it. She had a couple weeks before had been a little worried and concerned and then sent us an email, nailed it, uh, exceeded way above board. And uh, she's in a position where it's a hundred percent commission based uh -huh. business. Deal. So huge deal. She had the biggest year ever in her whole career and was very excited about that. But what's cool is that simultaneously, she also had a very big success in her love life. Uh, earlier that year, she had, um, after being single for 18 years, she found her soulmate. Wow. Yeah. So she's crushing it That's in love big. and money, which are two of the biggies. Love and money people, is big. <laughs> which people. big. Which bigger, crushing it one year in money or finding your soulmate? I don't know. I guess it depends on the person. <laughs> I don't know. I think you can always make money. Finding that yeah, soulmate finding is hard. Yeah, finding the soulmate. That's just, you just need the one, right? But it's yeah, that but special one. But it's hard one. because it's one out of, uh, you know, billions. And there's no... Well, yeah, and also just the 18 years of like breaking through of what what kept her single for 18 years and then being okay with being in a relationship. Once she shifted internally, again, it's about that mindset shift. Something in, in her switched internally to say, okay, now I'm ready. Yeah. And then that person. And her life is a lot her. bigger now. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah when you want to play big, that's a much bigger, yeah. bigger life now. That, yep. That's awesome. So what are the, you know, take – Whoever that was, I don't mm -hmm. know her name, obviously, but um, what was the surprise benefit? Was she surprised that that relationship piece came along with the the money piece? Um, it had been something she'd been working towards and, and opening up to for a while. So I think, um, I don't know if she was surprised so much as that she was finally ready. Because he had been around, Okay. but it was like, am I ready to take that step? Am I ready to open up my heart? And... She decided that she was. So um, she decided she was. So so what are people really surprised at after they've gone through this? You know, they've gone, they've, I'm certain they've achieved certain things, mm -hmm. they've received what they wanted, but what are they surprised at? I think they're surprised at the uh, stories in their mind that aren't true. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is so good. There's a lot of those. There's a lot of them. And I was even talking to a client earlier today, and I said she was, you know, scared to come to our workshop because, you know, she's really shy. And, and uh, I said, it's going to be okay. If we can get to a point where we can chuckle at ourselves and and at the stories we've made up in our minds that we think are true, we're doing really good, you know, and just yeah, just, that, just that a is, little laugh at yourself. Is, well, it goes so a long easy. way. <laughs> and, you know, I look at my clients. I work with some pretty high-powered leaders, you know, mm -hmm. and their perspective on their team and on other people, um, if you ask them, are they open-minded do they are they comfortable with diversity? You'd get all the right answers. Of course. Uh, and yet things happen, and they get mad over this or get mad over that, and then then we find out that you know, hey, that's not accurate thinking. <laughs> and that's a place where we can make a shift, and all of a sudden yeah. you can take a leader who is pretty good and make them tremendous. Right. Right. You know, and it's just because this stuff is in there, and it's not it's not bad or good. We all have it, mm -hmm. um, but uncovering it to where you can make good decisions with it. Um, that's the key. Mm -hmm. so that that is pretty. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I love that. So um, you're going to share some tips with us. 
I am. I'm going to share some tips. So one of the tips, um, and this is for business owners, right? For business well, yeah, because business, business owners is our classic yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. So my three tips are being curious uh -huh. and being consistent uh -huh. and play nice with others. Okay, so help. let's describe it. Yeah, that, so my first means. tip, being curious. I really think, and it goes right along with what you just said about being a great leader. At one point, it's like, Instead of coming in with the, I already know everything, I don't need any help, um, I know what this meant, this, you know. I know. It's, yeah, yeah, I, I know, know I know, I know, yeah, which I, know I, I, you know, I have that as well. Um, it's really about, okay, interesting. What else is possible? What else might not be true? What else could be true? What el um, who might I be able to reach out to for support? And that, it's a, it's a very different um opening versus a like it's it's like a huh. well, I, I know it's almost like you know yeah, it's, it's, say it's you like you that can't. it's like a light switch it's on and off i know it means that you're just turning off the learning you're not open yeah, yeah you're not open you're yeah. not open so so a lot of times i think even just the simple what else is possible what else could possibly be true about this person about the situation other than the story i have in my head yeah yeah and that story I love to be We honest. really want is it that, to be true. Is that fact? We do. <laughs> is that fact or just a, an assumption? An is that just a story? It's interpretation, hundred percent. All right, consistent. So consistent consistency yeah. is our second one. Um, being consistent, I think, finding a system that works for you, and then using that system consistently. So it's funny. It couples with curiosity. You got to be curious to see like uh, what might be the best system for me, and, and start poking around and seeing what's what's going to work for you, but really having that consistency of like, you know, uh, it could be, if you have your own business, you're probably prospecting, excuse me, prospecting. Prospecting, yeah. Sales, your, everybody's doing You know, sales things, yeah. and marketing, but like, how much are you prospecting? Five minutes a week or <laughs> right. 20 hours a week? Well, you know, are you doing it daily? What's your process? A lot, I, like even with social media, with marketing, I know it's, it's easy as a business owner to get, like, I should be doing this and Twitter and this and Instagram and all these different things, and we get so overwhelmed, we don't do any of them. And we don't do any of it. Yeah. So, so it's like so right, pick, a, pick, pick a lane and and work it. Go for it. Yeah. yeah, work it. And then of course, course adjust as as needed. And then the third one is the play nice with others or collaboration. Uh, I think going back to being open to diverse people and situations, um, not expecting everybody to do things the way you do them, but appreciating people who. Uh, do things a little bit differently. Surrounding yourself with people who offer something you don't you don't do very well. Well, fill in your gaps. Yeah. I mean, in, in a case, yep, you know, you, you, said you that. hire people that are just like you. Your gaps are still there. Those are right. your problems. Right. Uh, the challenge when you bring in diversity, somebody that mm -hmm. thinks differently than you, mm -hmm. is that you have to accept that. You yeah. have to listen. You have to learn. You kind of have to meet them halfway, which means half the work is yours. Right. And and just that that play nice with others. I, I see a lot of times people. Uh, like maybe even in a networking situation, don't call somebody back in, maybe they're going to keep seeing that networking person again and again. And I'm like, why would you, I, I would never do that. <laughs> right. Well, but it is, you know, we've, we've been in those arenas and we've seen that happen before. Yeah. And just, uh, playing nice with others. It's, yeah. that's a respect combat con yes. concept. There's all, all yeah. a lot of good pieces. Yeah. Um, so those are your top three tips for, Insights to business or tips for personal development? That's my tips for business. Business. Those are yes. your insights, right? Yes. Which is good because I didn't yes. really give you the lead in on that effectively. Okay. That's so, okay. So from a, from an owner insights place, that's that's really those are really effective, and that was um, curious, consistency, and play nice. Yes. And so now, in terms of personal development, mm -hmm. right? For those of them that are interested in personal development yeah. out there, what would you recommend? You know, my one uh, big big takeaway tip that I would give people, and this this is a little bit of a twist from what they more, might normally hear. Um, it's definitely having a, a compelling vision. And I know a lot of times people know, oh, I know I have a vision, I have a vision board, or I, of course I, I come up with my resolutions for the year. It's, it's beyond that. Because when I talk about vision, um, and from productive learning stance, it's having a compelling vision infused with emotion, and like your purpose, why? Like why? would you change? If you have this vision means that it's something you're going for. It's not there yet. You're you're moving yeah, towards it, right? It's not yeah. there yet. So, which means something is going to need to change. The you who is right now is different than the you who is in that vision. 
something has to change. Something's right? going to change. Doesn't exist today. Yeah, because it doesn't you exist right now. It. So then, why would you change? What would it be for? What feelings would you need to have? Or what are you going for? And a lot of times people say their vision where they just focus on the stuff or the external, like I'm going to make X amount of money or I'm going to have this kind of car. But how would you feel if and you had that? that's a part of it, but how you feel. Yeah, Connecting that's, the emotions yes, is really what you're yes, talking about. Yeah, so it's infusing it with the feeling, with the emotion, with the, with the why. Why would I have that? Well, and I, I like the comment you made earlier when you said it's sort of like when, when you're connected. When we're talking about compelling, compelling is like you've got to do it. And so compelling, why you can't even imagine yourself doing anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the only reason why you're doing anything is because, you know, of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and that when you have that kind of a compelling vision, I mean, you can break through walls. Makes it sense. So compelling yes. vision, that's, yes. that's, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then you, you also said something about um, awareness of self. Mm -hmm. um, Help me. Do you remember which we were? Yes. Yeah. So we were. So the the three p, the three keys to transformation really. Uh, one is is having a compelling vision. Two is developing your, an understanding of yourself, and three is developing your awareness. Okay. So in terms of developing an understanding of yourself, like if you're a business owner and you notice that you um, are struggling with something, like I mean, it's just gosh, you know, I keep noticing that I I'm struggling with this certain area or certain person or project. It's, an, it's important to take a step back and think, where else has this come up in my life? Where is this a else, theme? Yeah. Is this a theme? Because it probably is. We're like, no, it's just about my business. Uh, eh, probably not. I've encountered a couple <laughs> of them in my life. I, I guarantee you. I, I know where you're going with this. It's not an accident that this is happening. So understanding, okay, where did this come from? So that that way when you get to that point um, you presently, recognize you, recognize you can recognize it. You go, okay, Wow. This isn't, you know, me on the playground when I was in fifth grade. You know, this is <laughs> or whatever well, it was that it could be. Yes. Yeah. And then this, and then the third one is developing your awareness. So when you're having it in the moment right now, what can you do to catch it, stop it, redirect? Um, for example, like uh, sometimes we, we might notice we're spinning on something like I – this is when you're you can't go to sleep at night because you're worried about a problem. You're you're Something's waking going. up in the middle of the night and you're just like you're just or you can't let it go. That's the phrases that I'll hear like, oh, I just couldn't stop. I just I just I was obsessed. I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I think, okay, how long, how long were you doing that? Oh, like a week. Okay, what if we could cut that into three and a half days? They're like, not possible. I'm like, I think it is. What if we could cut it down to a day? What about an hour? How about five minutes? So when we start really like, that's when you start making serious change on someone's Pretty big head quality rubs. of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of like, you don't need to spin on that for days. Let's, and that's where the awareness comes in. What, how can you get yourself to where it's just a few minutes? You're like, okay, I got it. I know it's coming from here and I'm moving forward. Right. Right. Well, and, you know, interesting. So I'm going to just wrap with this last question. Okay. But. You know, we got compelling vision, right? Mm -hmm. So there's energy and passion. I want to get this thing done. Mm -hmm. And uh, often there's a lot of work and effort and energy to get that done. Otherwise, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Um, but to me, that's it. Part of the part of my even sleep patterns and energy are that I wake up and go, oh, I get this light bulb and I got, I, I can do this and mm -hmm. I go do it. Yeah. And then I go back to sleep. Yep. And it's done. Yeah. But I'm going to have that because that's the kind of person I am. I just have this energy. Mm -hmm. I was talking to, to Johnny, and, and I said, you know, you, you need to put that thing up on Dropbox so I can get it. If I'm working at midnight or 1230 or 1 o'clock in the morning, I can find it because mm -hmm. you don't want me to call you, right? Right. No. And uh, so he was just teasing me. He says, you know, your sleep patterns are so weird, Dad. You get up and you can work, you know, like clear, clearly, you know, with clarity. You can actually get something yeah. done. Right? I found but that's uh, just kind of the way my thing absolutely. works. Absolutely. I, I can relate to that, too. Um, when I have, when I'm constructing a new talk um, where I'm going to be speaking somewhere and I've got a new thing I'm going to bring up, I'll wake up at, you know, four in the morning and it'll be, it'll be, it's, it's like it's coming to me. Like I can hear myself saying it and I go, okay, I'll just get up and write it down because. Just get up and do it. Because, because and then it, I go right and then, then I, I get can out go to sleep. and then I can go back to bed. Exactly. Because right, if I don't, if I don't get up, I'm not going to sleep anyway. Right. There, yeah. I, I mean, it's just going to spin. Yeah. It's going to keep going. It's just going to yeah. keep spinning. Yeah. So this has been awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I really you. appreciate you coming on the show Thanks and spending for some time. Me. And I love your insights <laughs> and I love, I, well, I just. You know, I just enjoy having these kind of conversations. It's been awesome. I love your questions. Thank All right. you. Well, thank you very much. We'll come back and see us again. Okay. All right. Great.
Join us again for another episode of Business Wits Better Business Results.